Okay, um, welcome. welcome to the DDPS seminar, everyone. Uh, let's go over some logistics. Uh, first, please mute yourself during the talk unless you have questions. If you have questions, you are welcome to unmute and ask. Um, otherwise, please uh, use chat room to post your questions so that we can address them in Q&A uh, sessions. Um, second DDPS um, seminar is open to external audiences. Uh, therefore, no classified discussion is allowed. Uh, finally, the talk today will be recorded and uploaded in our YouTube channel. That's about it. Now, let me introduce our speaker today. Um, actually, let me get rid of the... the doo -doo. Okay, uh, let me introduce our speaker today. Um, it is an honor to host Dimitri uh, Anistravo, Any, Any uh, uh, who is a professor of nuclear uh, engineering, engineering at uh, North Carolina, Carolina State University. He works in the field of computational physics, numerical analysis, and particle transport theory. His research involves uh, development of iteration methods for the Boltzmann transport equation, computational methods for multi-physics and multi-scale problems, uh, mathematical models of particle transport in various physical systems, reduced total models. Prior to joining NC State, he was a research staff member of uh, Caldish Institute for Applied Mathematics and Institute for Mathematical Modeling of Russian Academy of Sciences, uh, visiting assistant professor at the Department of nu uh, Nuclear Engineering at Texas A&M University. Dimitri uh, had served as a guest scientist to the Computational Transport Group at Los Alamos uh, National uh, Laboratory. He is currently a guest scientist at the Center of Applied uh, Scientific Computing at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he's on site. Uh, so if you want to uh, have a discussion with Dimitri, uh, please feel free to email him and maybe you guys can see uh, on site and discuss. And Dimitri uh, received his PhD in Mathematical and Physical Sciences from Russian Academy of Sciences and MS degree in Physics from Moscow uh, Institute of Physics and Technology. Today, Dimitri will present an interesting topic, uh, which is reduced total models for thermal radiative transfer problems based on moment equations and POD DMD of Eddington tensor. Please enjoy and expect a wonderful talk. Now, without further ado, let me pass the button uh, by asking one random question as usual. Uh, since it is Friday today, today's random question is, uh, what are your favorite things to do during the weekend, Dimitri? Traveling around California. So oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah, you're taking advantage of being here, right? That's yeah, awesome. Definitely. Yeah. All right. It's all yours. Okay. Thank you very much for introduction. And of course, thank you very much for, for invitation. This is a very nice opportunity to present to this audience. So, uh, this is the title of the talk. I will talk about reduced order models for uh, thermal radiative transfer based on moment equations and uh, POD and DMD leading to factor uh, tensor. Uh, oops. Oh. Yeah, there it is. Um, so, the short outline of my talk, uh, I will briefly introduce basic ideas and of course I will start defining what kind of problems we consider. Uh, then I will derive multi-level uh, low the quasi diffusion equations for the Boltzmann transport equation. These uh, type of equations are also known as variable Eddington factor equations. Uh, then I formulate uh, data-driven reduced order models for, for this type of problems using POD and DMD. Whether it intends to present uh, numerical, some numerical results uh, into the Cartesian geometry, finish with discussion. And of course, I want to uh, attract attention uh, and announce that this is my joint work with uh, Joe Cole, who is my grad student at uh, North Carolina State University. So, um, this is all about uh, simulation of particle transport phenomena. And there are several 
significant challenges to that type of physical problem. First of all, higher dimensionality, and that's why we talk here about reduced other models. Uh, but it's also multiple scales, uh, strong nonlinearity, and uh, strong coupling between equations. So, for example, in thermal radiative transfer, opacities depend on state of matter, and state of matter significant is significantly affected by um, fluxes of, of photons in this case and other particles. Uh, then, system of equation usually has different types of uh, equations involved in it. Then there is different characteristic behavior uh, from various viewpoints and different energy ranges. And another important thing about Boltzmann transport equation that it is integral differential uh, equation and differential operator is hyperbolic, but integral one um, couples everything and every point uh, of the domain. So those are major challenges. So now um, about thermal radiative tr transfer problem. Uh, so it is defined by the uh, Boltzmann transport equation, or what's also called radiative transfer equation. So this is multi-group. Uh, so the solution is intensity. I, it's the intensity, specific intensity of photons, G index, uh, group index. So I is actually integral over a certain range of uh, frequency interval chosen for a given problem, uh, exposition omega, direction of uh, photon travel uh, and t is time of course um, so it's multi-dimensional so, uh, boundary condition initial conditions as shown here uh, boundary condition are specified for incoming directions in the domain g uh, then in that uh, fundamental TRT problem Boltzmann transport equation is coupled with material energy balance equation so epsilon is energy that usually non-linearly de non dependent on temperature, T is temperature, T capital is temperature. Coppers are opacities, or, or sometimes cross-sections. Uh, B sub G is the Planckian function. So that describes, describes um, emission, the spectrum of uh, emission in, uh, in equilibrium, in this case, local equilibrium. So, and this is really a fundamental thermal radiative transfer model. So, uh, it neglects heat conduction, scattering, external sources, as well as material motion. Uh, and it models, for example, supersonic radiation wave. Now, uh, the reason we consider this problem and, and try to develop methods for that particular problem, uh, because it's actually a very good available test platform for development method for general radiative transfer problems like radiative hydrodynamics. So there are important um, applications for TRT. First of all, high energy density physics, inertial confinement fusion, uh, in astrophysics, of course, uh, and some others. And as you noticed, uh, there are some s important similarities with, with general problems like radiative hydrodynamics. It's high dimensionality, nonlinearity, different scales in time and space and energy, uh, strong coupling between uh, Boltzmann transport equation and material energy balance equation, and different behaviors in different energy ranges. So now about dimensionality. So let's do a little, little arithmetics. Uh, so we look at uh, intensity that is uh, one of our primary unknowns uh, and compare with temperature, which is very good representation of what we usually have a four state of matter. So state of matter depends only on space and time uh, and intensity depends also on directions and uh, energy on, on uh, frequency group or number of frequency groups. So, and if we just look at uh, the number of variables in 3D case, so we have seven independent variables and uh, if we start looking at very posh mesh in space, for example, we have 100, 100 by 100, so we get 10, to six uh, cells in this case, hundred directions, hundred groups, hundred times moment uh, instances of time that we want to look at in problem, uh, we will get ten to twelve unknowns. And if we look about, for example, ten flop per unknown, we get point one petaflop in this case. So uh, that's why we always want uh, to find some good 
reduced all the models. And there are very famous ones like diffusion equation, P1 equation, OSPN equation. So, and of course we, but they have quite uh, limitations for, in terms of accuracy and in terms of convergence, if you wish to an exact solution. So um, now about uh, main elements of uh, the presented met methodology that I'm going to show. So first of all, it's nonlinear projection approach, and you can look at this, uh, at the result of application of this approach in many different ways. First of all, uh, you can look at this as method of moments because the equation will be written for moments of the intensity. Uh, you can look at this as multi-level method because we will define a hierarchy of equations. And it can be viewed as a multi-grid method because it's basically as uh, different grids in the phase space. Uh, this method introduces some uh, average quantities that are essential for closing this year Q equation. So that's why there are elements of homogenization method. And when we define this multi-level system of equation year Q, we actually sequentially reduce dimensionality. So that's why this uh, projection approach, of course, it's a method for reduction of dimensionality. And it's perfect in this regard with all those properties for solving, uh, for applying to multi-physics, multi-scale problems, developing uh, approximate models reduced order models, and as a result, you can use it for the, res the resulting equations and the reduced order models for sensitivity and uncertainty analysis. Now, in terms of data compression techniques, uh, we will apply them to closures that we use for these uh, multi-level equations, and we will use uh, proper orthogonal decomposition and dynamic mode decomposition for these closures, specifically adding tensor. Now, a very short overview of general approach or this nonlinear projection approach. Uh, if we have some equation L psi S psi equals F psi plus Q, where L and S some given operators with some different properties. And in this case, you can think that L is differential operator and S is integral operator. So it's kind of uh, the structure of uh, Boltzmann equation. Uh, then psi is function of um, write a number of independent variables. So we introduce a couple of projection operators, P for the equations, and we project the equation. And then we need, we have in mind, uh, close this system of equations. So that's why we need another operator F that will then give us projection for, uh, for the solution itself to, to define new uh, set of functions that we will consider unknowns with uh, we will we may have more fun more known functions, but they will depend on fewer independent uh, variables, and this is the basis for this Euroqube multi Euroqube equations. So then uh, we take this projected equations and close them equivalently with some uh, functionals or factors, and get uh, lower the equations projected equations for now for new set of unknowns xi. Uh, and this lower operator now depends non-linearly on uh, functionals that we introduced. Uh, the next step in finishing a formulation is we need to have prolongation operator that will connect uh, our unknowns in projected space with the original space. So we introduce some prolongation operator M that also can depend on some functionals or factors. And as a result, we get a system of high order problem uh, modified. So where the right hand side of this equation is modified with uh, projection operator M and closed with some uh, functionals and lower the problem uh, defined for new unknowns. It's a nonlinear operator and our exact closures are gammas and betas. So now uh, I will walk you through uh, derivation of system of equations for uh, Boltzmann equation, the radiative transfer equation, so-called quasi-diffusion equations. They're also known as variable dynamic factor. And the reason they're called quasi-diffusion because they will remind you diffusion, but they are not diffusion, they're exact equations because the closures are exact. So we take first uh, angular moments, or, uh, moments in terms of omega, with one and uh, with omega. So this gives us and we 
uh, picked up this set of unknowns. Nature for this type of problem, so usually this class of problems are interested in energy density, E, uh, and F, uh, flux. So that's why just, just applying these uh, moments, we get two unclosed equations. Well, actually, this is the vector equation, so in general, it's like three equations. And this is the highest moment, H, which is uh, basically a tensor, omega, omega, of I. And what is done here is that uh, this moment is, is closed with uh, uh, Eddington or quasi-diffusion tensor, which can be interpreted as basically average omega omega, uh, where intensity is the averaging function. And what is nice about this uh, is that this functional is stable. And that's what I kind of missed uh, in the previous couple of slides that the closures, uh, the idea for this nonlinear projection is to close the new system of equations with some factors and functionals that are stable to uh, variation of, of, of the high order solution. Then it gives some stability in terms of iterations when you start solving this nonlinear system of equations. So, as a result, uh, we get a closed system of equations, uh, zeros and first moments defined for. Uh, group energy density and uh, radiation energy density and group flux. So the next step is to take these uh, moment equations, closed moment equations, and basically average them over energy or with some over energy uh, groups or frequency groups. I will probably keep going back and forth because energy and frequency in this case uh, are related uh, photon energy. So um, in this case, unknowns are total Radiation energy density, which is a summation over all groups of EG and total flux. Again, when we sum those equations, we get some terms that are not closed. For example, this term of kind of absorption term in uh, the first moment equation and uh, another absorption term, uh, another terms here um, in the second equation. And we introduce uh, average gray, effective gray Eddington tensor, where this will be averaged with EG. Uh, we introduce uh, effective gray opacities. And uh, here we introduce some effective gray opacities that average with different function. Actually, it, they average, so it will be a, a tensor, diagonal tensor, uh, which is averaged with uh, another function. So actually absolute value of F. And as a result, we get now closed system of equations for now total energy, uh, radiation energy density and total flux. And let me show now on this slide, uh, the whole system of equation hierarchy. So we have high order Boltzmann transport equation and uh, that where opacities and the right hand side emission term depends on temperature. Multi-group law, the quasi-diffusion equations for Radiation energy density and group group energy densities and and fluxes. Then, so the to group a group Eddington tensor formulates the closures. So that's why we can solve transport equation, get intensities, get closures. Eddington tensor define. This multi group law, the quasi diffusion equation, the solution of these equations define closures for effective gray equations. Those are moment equations. And the material energy balance equation is coupled at that level now. So, and of course, it's transformed with similar uh, effective gray quantities. So now it's the, uh, the system of equations, nonlinear system of equations, that is equivalent to the original one. And it seems like we got more equations that, than before. Uh, and it seems like we were supposed to do more work than before because we have more equations. But it's actually uh, opposite because uh, the way this system of equations is formulated allows you to solve this uh, original TRT problem quite effectively. The iteration process that goes through the whole system of equation converges extremely fast and it it gives you effectiveness in that regard. 
So and there are a lot of details, but this is uh, this is not the point of this work. Uh, the point of this work that if you have this system equation now, you can consider that what if you have data for the Eddington tensor, group Eddington tensor. So then you can do various approximation of, with data compression techniques, and then you get approximate closures of various qualities for this moment system, uh, system of moment equations. So that's that's the idea of of this work is that now, uh, if we generate data for uh, Eddington tensor, so then we can use uh, full full model, for example, full order model, or from some experimental data. So we can use, for example, POD or DMD or Eddington tensor, and then we get cl closures of different quality in terms of uh, approximation, and then uh, the system moment system uh, coupled with material energy balance equation can be solved and and give us a reduced order model so now um, i will uh, mention how we discretize this equation when we move to uh, numerical results but in any case when you discretize uh, this system of equations you eventually have some spatial cells and i will consider for simplicity that cells are orthogonal and uh, rectangular, orthogonal. And now we will look at what we need to do in terms of generating data for uh, data compression techniques. And let's let's assume that we have that kind of cell, and that we approximate equations in a way that this moment equations require certain grids uh, grid functions of uh, Eddington tensor, components of Eddington tensor. So first of all, this is with, with uh, subscript C, mean that it's cell average components of the tensor. But then of course, usually phase uh, quantities are involved. So we will need phase average quantities of Eddington tensor. By the way, not all components, that's kind of the result of discretization of moment equation. So, we have some set of grids functions for components of Eddington tensor that we need. We can generate them from, uh, for example, full order model, a specific one that, that we are interested in to then simulate and consider how good uh, various approximations. So uh, then we can uh, generate snapshot uh, snapshots of components of tensor in the phase space over the whole a range of uh, energy and 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 or in all groups and over the whole spatial domain. So this vector represents alpha and beta. It's some com uh, tensor components, uh, but it's the whole uh, set of data for that component of of grids function for in all groups in all space in the whole spatial domain over the whole range of time that we're interested in. Then we generate uh, data matrices. And in this case, we have the data to uh, perform some approximation using, for example, POD or DMD. That's what is done in this work. So just to remind you uh, the idea of proper orthogonal decomposition, how we use it here. So we have data matrix now of snapshots of uh, components of grids function of Eddington tensor. Those grids functions that we need uh, for our discretized uh, low order cross diffusion equations, uh, we can perform a singular value decomposition that will give us uh, as a product of left uh, singular vectors, uh, diagonal matrix of singular uh, singular values, and V is V is uh, matrix of right singular vectors. So then uh, it gives us certain rank, D it's the maximum rank that is defined by uh, by number of singular values. And then we can use low rank approximation of uh, Eddington components of Eddington tensor or grids functions using low rank approximation of A in this case. And as a result, we have this expansion where U small and V are corresponding uh, singular vectors. Now, uh, uh, if we use, or well, when we use a DMD. So a DMD uh, looks at the data and tries to find a best 
uh, linear operator that represents evolution of this time dependent net or dynamics. So that's why basically we get a dynamic system for components of Eddington tensor. And if we have this matrix B linear operator, then we can solve this. And this is the typical representation of this linear uh, ODE system of ODEs. And that's what uh, to, to do DMD. So we, according to classical version, we use a constant time step form uh, two sets of data matrices, which are shifted, shifted data matrices. So the first one is from the first time step to n t minus one to a, uh, first to, to, to last. And then from second to the last uh, instant of time that we're interested in the cover. And then um, DMD uh, generates the closest approximation of being Fabrenius norm, which is a product of uh, X, had this matrix and X plus, which is uh, pseudo inverse of, of matrix X. So then we get a representation of uh, our vector F as, as this, uh, this expansion in eigenfunction and um, frequencies that we get from analysis of this matrix actually as a uh, feed to as a vectors, eigenvectors of uh, B tilde. And that's that's the first version. Uh, the, another one that we can also use equilibrium subtracted DMD, and that's what we do here. So basically, then we operate not with the original data, but with the data where we subtract it from each uh, vector, the equilibrium, or some uh, some vector that we consider useful for uh, considering then the difference between date and some instant of time that is interesting. And usually, for example, if you solve time-dependent uh, TRT problem, there is, uh, it, it tends to steady state problem, of course, provided that the source is constant in time and in, in, in coming, but conditions are constant in time. So in our case, this equilibrium value is actually the last instant of time, which is really close to steady state. So now uh, some uh, test problems to show how things work. So this is a 2D uh, version of very famous flag comment test that was published long time ago on JCP. Um, this test uh, provides you with uh, spectral opacities as a function of mu and, and temperature. Uh, it has linear energy density, uh, material energy density, and uh, there is incoming radiation at the left boundary for uh, with with Planckian spectrum at temperature one kV, and initial condition for temperature in the whole domain in one eV or ten to minus three kV. Uh, it's uh, square domain from uh, zero to six in both directions, and vacuum boundary condition top, bottom, and uh, and right. So we can see the interval of time uh, from zero to six nanoseconds, and we use time step to 10 to minus two nanoseconds. Uh, so it's basically a total 300 time steps. Uh, we form 17 groups that are adjusted for that particular time problem group structure. Uh, so 70 NG sub uh, 17, we use 20 by 20 uh, uniform Orthogonal grid. Now we have an axis 400. We use uh, quadruple uh, quadrature with 36 angles per octant. So a total we get 144 uh, directions. And in terms of discretization of, of multi level system of equations for uh, Boltzmann transfer equation, we use full implicit in time and simple uh, corner balance in space. We use discrete ordinates uh, for the rest of the system. We also use full implicit in time and, and in space, multi group law, the quasi diffusion equation that discretized with a second order finite volume scheme. That's where the specific, uh, the, the specifics of grids function for Eddington tensor come from. It, it, it tells you where you need to generate, uh, when you need to define those uh, grids functions. And effective gray law, the quasi diffusions are uh, derived uh, by algebraically consistent discretization of multi with multi group law, the quasi diffusion equation. 
So now let's take a look a little bit at numbers. Uh, so in this case, we have um, 300 time steps and we have 400 uh, cells, 144 directions in, in angle and 17 groups. So it gives us about 10 to six unknowns. And it's just a kind of a, um, orientation in terms of, because some unknowns we have a little bit more of them. So this is about 10 to six. And uh, when we look at just loader equation, so the dimensionality of this problem is significantly less. So it's about six, seven, 10 times the minus three. And we have the same number of time steps. And this is just a, a little uh, illustration of how the wave propagates. And actually, this is not 20 by 20 cells. It's just 10 by 10 for this movie. And now uh, let's look at results. So first, we start from analysis of uh, Eddington tensor. And we use uh, this criterion for determining rank for the approximation that we would like to use. We look at the, the ratio between between singular values, squares, or singular values, uh, truncated those, that's from uh, desired rank R to the full rank, and compare them with all uh, ranges of, of singular values. So basically it tells you what is the fraction of energy uh, in modes of, of an angular, uh, singular vector mode that we neglect. Uh, and Xi is the criterion. So, and this is the graph uh, for, for the case we look at POD expansion of uh, Eddington tensor and all those curves are for different grids function of for different components of Eddington tensor. And this is the criterion 10 to minus two, 10 to minus four. And this is the rank maximum rank is 300. So if we pick up the lowest rank uh, or oh, 10 to minus two, so the rank will be about uh, 15. Uh, if we go to 10 to minus 4, it will be about 40. And now compare uh, this with the full phase space where the intensity lives. So, and so, and further, so of course, the, the, the tight criterion of the, of the higher rank. Uh, this is the same for DMD. Uh, DMD has a little bit uh, lower rank actually for each absolute. But this actually results with uh, to a little bit uh, less accurate approximation in this regard. I don't show here DMD uh, with equilibrium subtraction because it's very similar. It's actually very similar to uh, to uh, POD in this case. So the analysis shows that we can so this the <clears throat> rank up to ten to minus six, which would be very nice in terms of quality. Of approximation, it's it goes up to just 50, so it's a nice. So it means that we really have some good compression in this regard. So now the results. Uh, first results for reduced order model based on moment equations POD of uh, Eddington tensor. So again, this is the same criterion. I just to remind you that we solve it with uh, this time step two, 10 to minus two nanoseconds over the range from zero to six nanoseconds, and those graphs shows. Uh, the relative error in two norm for temperature uh, produced by reduced order models for various criterions of Xi uh, compared to full order model. Full order model is the one that was solved on that, that particular given phase space, grid, and time with that exact method with, uh, with solving uh, time dependent Boltzmann equation approximated with simple common balance. So that's why this is our full order model. And we want to see how we actually uh, approximate the equation that we generated. And uh, the first line, so here it's for Xi 10 to minus two and the error over the full range of, of time that way it's about 10 to minus four. If we increase, uh, if we make it tighter for a couple of orders of magnitude 10 to minus four, the error goes to 10 to minus six then extra order, two orders of magnitude shows 10 to minus eight. So basically it's about two orders of magnitude times uh, psi in this regard. And we see that we rather uniformly converge. So we can say that's kind of uniformly converge in, in uh, with, with psi and 
that's what we want to make sure that it goes back to basically truncation of uh, our numerical error from uh, truncation error in numerical calculation so that when we take full rank 10 to minus 16 will give you a full rank that we would get back to uh, the quality of the solution that we got because the convergence criterion was about 10 to minus uh, 15 actually there. So the same is for energy density. So you can see it's very similar in terms of the uh, error that we get. Uh, now the same results for DMD. And uh, I mentioned that uh, the rank for the same uh, psi, uh, like 10 to minus two, for example, is a little bit less. And that's just reflected in terms of the, the error in uh, to norm compared to full order model. So the error is about 10 to minus two, two orders of magnitude greater, which is basically it tracks, it tracks uh, psi. But what you also uh, see with uh, DMD is that as we get closer and closer to a very, so getting, using full rank, we started kind of uh, getting noise and uh, we looked at this and we believe that it's really numerics that prevents us from getting to the original uh, quality and it's sensitive and it's it's known that DMD is, is sensitive to uh, some numerics and especially with well rank approximation that we use projected DMD. Uh, now this is a equilibrium subtracted. So the equilibrium subtracted shows improvement in terms of accuracy for uh, low rank. Uh, that's what you can see like 10 to minus two gets back to 10 to minus four, both for temperature and energy density. But again, uh, equilibrium subtracted get uses more uh, more elements of uh, singular values in this case, so higher rank, so which is comparable with POD, and that's again that kind of explains that it gives us a better accuracy here, and uh, it is far more sensitive as we can see when we go with higher rank to numerics that uh, we use for generating these uh, vectors and singular values. So uh, now uh, we uh, would like to look at how actually we converge with uh, making this uh, tolerance tighter and tighter, psi. And, what, and those curves now show different instances of time uh, for different solutions with different criterion uh, psi. So, and so this is almost the very beginning, it's uh, 10 to minus two nanoseconds. So then uh, the rest moments, one nanoseconds, two, three, four, and six, we can see that basically we have, and if we looked at this, the delta logarithmic scale. So this is psi, and this is the relative error in two norm for, for epsilon. So, and we see that we converge linearly here, both for uh, energy density and temperature. So similar behavior for DMD, but again, you saw some uh, numerics, some noise in for uh, higher rank and that was, of course, we see that there was some situation and errors do not get, uh, so stop converging into this numerics and uh, the behavior of DMD uh, equilibrium subtracted is similar. Now, those are integral norms, and it's interesting, of course, to show uh, what is the spatial distribution of errors in this case. And this is just one, one instant, uh, just for uh, reduced order model of POD, uh, just to show that it's a relatively uniform distribution of errors. There is no some surprises that we missed uh, looking at uh, uh, integral norms. This is the instant uh, two nanoseconds and those are solutions actually a temperature for full order model energy. And you can see the distribution of temperature. So this from one KV up to about 0.4 on the other side. And this is the shape of uh, total energy, radiation energy density. And those are errors for the case, uh, Xi is 10 to minus four. And this is the range between 10 to minus four and 10 to minus six relative uh, error in, in temperature and energy, uh, and energy density. And this is to increase in error uh, uh, between this 
over the space, and this is associated with the location of the uh, radiation front. So that's why I kind of show. So you can see that this is where the front behaves, and that's where the air is increased relatively here for that instant of time. But it's relatively uniform. And now the last set of uh, numerical results. Um, in a lot of experiments, physicists measure breakout time. And it's very interesting to look at qualities of these reduced order models when we look actually what happens, how the dynamics of temperature and energy, radiation energy density on the opposite side of this domain. So basically where the wave comes to. And uh, we looked at average temperature on the right side of the domain and energy density on the right side. And this shows how temperature changes uh, in KV in this case uh, versus time in this problem from zero to six nanoseconds. And this is the dynamics of changing temperature on that side. So, and that's basically shows you that after about three nanoseconds, or actually about four nanoseconds, we got very close to steady state. It's still changing, but it's, it's very, very slow process that case. So this is the dynamics of energy density on, uh, on the right side an outgoing phase. So uh, if you pick up a breakaway time that, for example, you are interested in reaching temperature of uh, about like, for example, 80% of um, steady state. So it could be, so you can pick up any instant. And we look just at all instances to see what, how uh, things happen, how those models approximate breakout for uh, measurements. And those are errors from three different models with uh, blue is pure D. And this is all for 10 to minus four, uh, which is relative small rank, rank about 40 for Eddington tensors. This is pure D error, so it's less than 10 to minus six for temperature on other side dynamically, again, versus time and energy density on other side, also blue. Uh, then yellow is uh, DMD, uh, equilibrium subtracted, uh, also not, not very far from PUD and a little bit higher for that case, just DMD. But again, DMD uh, uses a low rank in that case. So uh, it shows that this model is quite accurate, especially for practical calculation because 10 to minus six uh, order of magnitude. So, and this is, uh, so this is conclusion for my talk. Uh, so I just want to remind you that uh, main elements of, of proposed methodologies are nonlinear projection of Boltzmann transport equation and formulation of uh, multi-level system of low order equations for moments of uh, intensity of radiation and uh, the application of data compression techniques for uh, approximative closures, in this case, uh, Eddington tensor. And this is quite general approach uh, that can be used for uh, quite different class of multi-physics uh, uh, problems, especially in high energy density physics, such as, uh, for example, radiative hydrodynamics. And we, uh, so here we uh, showed data compression techniques for uh, generation closure, dating contention, but we also developed reduced order models where we use POD Galerkin method for a Boltzmann transport equation. And that's uh, this uh, method is uh, this, POD Galerkin projected uh, transport equation is used coupled with uh, this year Q equations, and it also showed good results. And I, uh, I will show you some publication to give you some references. So in terms of close uh, steps in future research of that particular things, of course, the optimal sample techniques are important to generate beta data for, uh, for models to further improve efficiency and accuracy of those models. And of course, the interesting thing is parameterized reduced order models because you want to have a range of your parameters, incoming temperatures, opacities to really generate some reduced order models to perform some uh, sensitivity analysis or do some fast design calculations. And of course, I want to acknowledge at the end, a very important uh, item is that this research has been supported by uh, Department of Defense specifically Defense Threat Reduction Agency. And uh, this is uh, a short list of some publications that we have with Joe on uh, a related subject 
uh, for that uh, reduced order models. And uh, uh, please welcome any questions that you would like to. Okay, thank you so much for the great talk, Dimitri. Uh, I like the talk a lot. Um, I mean, the TRT is a very difficult problem to solve. It has um, all kinds of challenges uh, in one problem, like high dimensionality, uh, multi physics, uh, the, the multi uh, scales, and um, and yeah, I mean it's, it's yeah it's a large scale problem in nature. So you are solving a difficult problem. So let's have uh, thank you so much for the great talk and very interesting. Uh, let's have a Q and A session. Um, well, initially Tom uh, raised the question, but he uh, you answered his question. So um, I guess. Um, uh, let's move on to another question. Um, I don't see any other question in uh, in the chat room, uh, but I can start with uh, my questions while you guys are uh, thinking about your um, you know, your questions. Um, okay, so um, all these uh, the results you have uh, shown is are they the reproductive case? I, I assume um, so. You have it uh, the solution of the full order model, and then you you just. Yeah. Try to reproduce that uh, using the reduced reduce to the model, either POD or DMD, right? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it's, uh, can you comment on how you would um, extend that to a parametric case? Because um, that's where sure. the, the reduce to the model is. You know. Sure. And yes. we actually played with this. Uh, we played with this in one D, and uh, the publication that is shown here actually that we did in two thousand nineteen when we just uh, try to get uh, idea whether it's a, a workable approach. So what we, uh, what we tried uh, as, as, as a first approach is that we can generate uh, this data for different, for example, we played with incoming, with temperature of incoming radiation. And we would generate data uh, for several several different temperatures of incoming radiation. And then basically when we solve problem, we would interpolate uh, between those uh, temperatures. Uh, for example, we define one KV and 0.9 KV, and then we want to solve with 0.95 KV. So basically we then interpolate between those uh, data points. Uh, in this regard, we also, uh, and it showed, uh, promise in terms of that you do get reasonable results from a practical viewpoint of calculations. Uh, then we also played in that regard with actually looking at how good we can solve the problem with different time step, because another restriction, if you wish, and that's what you saw in terms of uh, this analysis is actually we use the same time step when we solved uh, reduced order models. But in this 1D version, uh, we, played with solving a problem with uh, various time steps. And again, it involves interpolation between the data that we have. And that's why we, uh, and that that was, uh, we, good, we got good results with POD. We tried uh, recently to look at what we can do with DMD, which DMD looked uh, quite promising because it gives you a natural interpolation function or continuous function in time and we didn't get so far uh, promising results so when we start solving a problem with uh, different time steps so that's why this is this is a puzzle but pod allows us to do this so that's why one of possible approaches for example of pod is really generating tables uh, generating data for various parameters uh, and then uh, looking at the way of interpolating. And of course, a very important factor of going in that direction is that really the good sampling for each of data because the quality of data will be important and so that we can even further. So, and that's what we got to a certain extent with projected PUD. We use different actually basis for different time ranges. But again, that's uh, one of the ways to short answer to your question is that uh, looking at interpolation between data that you generated for parameters that are uh, reasonably close. So it's mean that you create a mesh in your parametric space and then, and then uh, use interpolation and see how, how they behave. 
that's one way. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, okay. Um, I don't see any question from chat room, but don't don't hesitate. You know, unmute yourself and ask questions uh, if you have any. Um, my my second question is regarding the speed up, because I mean another uh, important aspect um, of the reduced model is you know obtaining a speed up. That's that's the whole point of introducing the reduced to the models. Um, but I haven't seen any results about the speed up you in in your so numerical. this speed up. Uh, so the important thing here is let's return back to. So this is the whole system of equations. Uh, if you mm -hmm. solve the transport equation, or you solve TRT problem with right. the transport away, so that's what you will need to solve. You will need to solve high order problem. Right. Uh, you will need to solve low order problems and the various methods that approach uh, TRT uh, introduces various lower the problem, not necessarily for the solution for a residual for uh, for uh, errors, iterative errors, etc. So, and the main burden here is actually the transport equation. So, by many reasons, uh, first of all, by dimensionality. So that's what what is done in that reduced order model is the transport equation is removed from calculations. So that's your save. So the qual so the uh, the the effort that you need to use to solve this type of reduced order models is very close to if you use uh, p one equations or diffusion. So that's your comparison. So basically, we got reduced order models with uh, significant with controlled quality, of course, with available data for the for the costs close to do p1 equations multi-group p1 equations and by the way what i did notice that i didn't uh, mention is that uh, to, to get an idea that p1 equation or diffusion equation or flux limited diffusion uh, will give you errors in these problems about 10 to minus one relative error mm -hmm. so that's that's the savings that you get in this case uh, another stage Another possible direction is actually now to apply a reduced uh, some reduction of dimensionality with uh, that type of approach uh, to actually lower the equations. That will be the next stage then. Mm. Okay, so, sounds good. Uh, thank you so much. Um, is there any other questions from the audiences? Um, No, um, no questions from the transport teams here. No. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much, Dimitri, uh, uh, for the great talk. Um, applause. Um, very nice talk. And I would like to have a um, Another meeting uh, with you uh, so that we can discuss further sure. the reduced to one we can collaborate. Um, but other than that, it was it was awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Bye. Yeah. Thank you everyone uh, for your attendance, and uh, we will conclude the uh, the seminar today. Um, bye bye.